now that we've explored the interface and its options, let's go ahead with entering data and registering an event for the Sarah RCH program at the YAM Health Center. We need to deselect the Malaria Case Management Program and select the Sarah RCH program. Then click on New Event in the top right hand corner and the event entry form appears. Let's take some time to review the form and its features, as not all of them are immediately evident. This form is using required items, value types, program rules, indicators, and validation rules to increase the quality of the data entered. Firstly, we can see that the report date is a required field. Required fields are marked with a red asterisk after the name. Let's select the report date. Next, when we try to type an incorrect value type for the particular data element, we get an error message telling us the correct value type. Now let's demonstrate the skip logic that functions as a result of program rules. You may be asking yourself, what is skip logic? Skip logic means a secondary question only appears if an individual completed the first question in a certain way. For example, a question regarding pregnancy status should only appear if the gender data element is female. Otherwise, this question remains hidden and it is skipped. In this event data entry form, if we select no to the question, does this facility offer family planning services, nothing happens to the form. However, if we select yes to this question, six sections of questions on family planning services appear. There are many other examples of skip logic in this form. Another one is in the Provider of Family Planning Services section. If you select yes to the question, have you or any provider of family planning services received any family planning training in the last two years, another question appears that asks, how many? Of course, if there have not been any staff trained in the last two years, there shouldn't even be an option to fill in the number of staff, as it's irrelevant. Skip logic helps with ensuring more reliable data for event and tracker programs. Next, let's review the program indicators and how they can be calculated within the event data entry form. On the right side of the form, there is a list of indicators. For these indicators, the system will calculate the expression and display the result the moment all values related to the indicator expression are entered. We can see that if we enter the numerators and denominators for the indicators, in this example, the number of staff in the facility, which we had already entered as 10, and the number of staff trained, let's enter seven, we can see that the indicator automatically calculates and gives us 70% as the percentage of staff trained on family planning. Now let's take a look at program validation rules. Program validation rules are used to validate the data entered in each event registration form. To demonstrate these rules, we will change the denominator value of the data element how many staff are in the facility to be less than the number of staff trained 
on family planning. Now, if we go back to the data element on staff trained on family planning in the form, we can see that a validation warning appears, letting us know that the number of staff that have received family planning training is greater than the total number of facility staff, which is, of course, not possible. It's useful to note that as a standard, validation warnings allow for the data to be submitted even if incorrect, similar to validation rules in aggregate data entry. However, a hard error can be configured instead of a warning, which would not allow the event to be completed unless it passes validation. Before proceeding, let's change the denominator value back to the original value so the warning no longer appears. Let's pause for a moment so you are able to complete the associated activities to solidify your knowledge of the web-based capture app.